the, uh, the title of my message is already on the screen. I guess uh, you can understand that. And the scripture reading also uh, followed that. Okay. If somebody comes to you and asks you, what is the main teaching of the scripture that you are reading and believing? What would you say? Or if somebody asks you, tell me, summarize the entire scripture. Summarize the book that you are reading and tell me one thing that explains everything in the book. What would you say? Love God, love neighbor. Okay, the two commandments, right? Which are given by oh, Jesus Christ. Let me ask you this question. How many of you said these commandments are given by Jesus Christ? Huh? Okay. There are few. Few say this, uh, these two commandments are given by Jesus Christ. Okay, let's see what the scripture says also. Okay, and these are very familiar commandments, very familiar scripture to all of us. So whenever we talk about some familiar scriptures or familiar things from the Bible, we tend to read over them. If there is any familiar thing, we think we already know it. So we just read over it. We don't give proper attention to them and we don't deliberately, diligently study the familiar scriptures. So since few days, I'm bringing all the familiar scriptures to you so that I wanted to take your attention towards the things which we already, I'm sorry, I want to take your attention to the things that we think that we already know, but which has even deeper meanings. So this is one among them. We all know the commandments and we talk about these two commandments. And we spoke so much about these commandments, but we pondered very little about them. Every time we talk about Christian life and uh, we say Christian life is all about obeying these two commandments. If you're able to love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and if you could love your neighbor as yourself, that's, that's all. That's what the Christian life is. And uh, if you could do that, you are the best Christian in the world. Okay. Let me ask you a question. How many commandments do we Christians have to obey from the entire scripture as an obligation? How many commandments do we have? Hmm? Okay. I get some, uh, some response from the back. 12 commandments. We got 12 commandments. Very good. And uh, 10 of them rem were reminded by Ricky this morning. And Joshua says we have two commandments. Okay. So for so all these commandments, the 10 commandments and everything, uh, they are, uh, they are uh, summarized in these two. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's very good. So uh, as Joshila said, we have two great commandments to obey. Okay, we call them great commandments. Keep that word in your mind. We'll, we are going to uh, reason about that word also. And next thing is, as uh, Selina also said, everything is summarized. All the Old Testament, 10 commandments and 613 regulations, they were summarized in these two commandments. One is in loving the Lord and second one is loving the neighbor. These are the great commandments from the law. I asked the question previously. How many of you say that Jesus gave this commandment? These commandments. Some of you said yes. But if you read the scripture very well, the question asked to Jesus was, Lord or master or teacher tell us what are the what is the greatest commandment in the law? Then Jesus said, Oh, you wanted the greatest commandments in the law. So love the Lord with all your heart, mind and soul and love your neighbor. So what these commandments are about? Are these commandments given by Jesus to us? No. These are the commandments summarized by Jesus from the law. So these two commandments are from the Old Testament. Okay. 
So many a times we heard messages saying like we are the Christ has set us free from the law. So we are not under the obligation of obeying all these 10 commandments and 613 regulations. If we just could obey two of them, that is enough. That's what the, that, that's what we think. I totally forgot about PPT. <laughs> okay, that's what we, we think. In the scripture itself, we have seen. But when the Pharisee heard that he... He had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. Then one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him and saying, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? The scripture is very clear here. And these are the greatest commandments from the Old Covenant, from the Old Testament. And But for we Christians, many times we just read over these and, th and say, these are the two commandments from the New Testament. New Testament. And all Christians have to Obey them. That's what uh, we say. And uh, as Jesus said, uh, uh, these are the greatest commandments from the law. Let me ask you another question to you. Okay. Are these commandments given to us so that we may obey? Are these commandments, these two commandments given to us so that we may obey? Now we have a little confusion. All right. Mm -hmm. and uh, another small example which I forgot to tell. Many a times we think Jesus only summarized these commandments but actually Pharisees already summarized before Jesus summarized them into these two commandments that we find in Luke chapter 10 verse uh, 27. Having said that, uh, are we uh, are we uh, obligated to obey these two commandments? These two great commandments. Yeah, now we'll come to the word which Joshua said. These are called the greatest commandments. Okay, but the scripture says in James chapter 2 verse 10, here it is written, For whoever shall keep the whole law and yet stumbles in one point, he is guilty of all. Let me say simplify it. In other words, what it is saying is, whoever obeys everything in the commandments, but fails to do one single commandment, he already broke the entire commandment, all the commandments. Right? And in other words, we are not able to keep even the small commandments properly. One of the small commandments is you shall not wear the clothes that are made of two, uh, what we call, uh, two, uh, two varieties of material. Like you cannot mix uh, cotton and nylon or uh, silk. You cannot mix cotton and silk. How many of us are wearing typically linen clothes today? None of us. In fact, we cannot afford, right? These are the smallest commandments from the com uh, from the law. And if uh, now my reason is this. If we are not able to follow the smallest commandments, are we able to obey the greatest commandments? We say these are the great commandments. And we are not able to obey the small commandment also. And how can we obey the great commandments? And we say we Christians have to obey these commandments. We have to do this. The answer is we cannot obey these commandments completely. No one could obey these commandments. Are we uh, obliged to obey these commandments? Just because Jesus said that does not mean he, he, uh, he is asking us to obey those commandments. Jesus also did not share these commandments to tell us to obey those commandments. Okay? And uh, what are these commandments? As we said before, these are the summary, summary of the law and the prophets which the people ask the question. Summarize law and prophets and he summarized them and he said that in Matthew 12, verse 14, we can see that uh, all the entire law and uh, prophets are uh, summarized in these or they are uh, they hang on they hang on to this thing as i said these two commandments are not given to us to follow but what do we understand when we look at these commandments as we said it's already the summary of the law and jesus says in john chapter 5 verse 39 to 40 here it says, you search the scripture for in them you think you have eternal life and these are they which testify of me. But you are not willing to come to me that you may have life. 
Here Jesus is saying, you are reading the entire Old Testament and you are searching for life in that. But all these commandments are talking about me, but you are not coming to me. Which means the entire Old Testament is talking about me, but you are not coming to me. If these two commandments are the summary of the entire Old Testament and what these two commandments must be talking about. They are talking about Jesus. They are not a new law that was given to you and me so that we may obey. But these two commandments, they testify Jesus. Because these two are the summary of the entire Old Testament. An entire Old Testament is testifying Jesus. Jesus himself said that. He, these, everything is, all the Old Testament law and prophets are speaking about me, but you are not coming to me. And if we think these two commandments are the commandments that we have to follow, it is the pattern that God set for us that we have to live and obey and fulfill it, then we still miss the point. We have missed our focus. Pharisees read the 10 commandments and 613 regulations and they missed Jesus. They could not find Jesus in that probably. That's a big syllabus. But we have only two commandments. We are reading them, but still we miss Jesus. Even in the short syllabus. That is what happening with happening with we Christians. Okay? Because the reality is these two commandments are not given for us to obey. But these two commandments are given to us. So that they may reveal Jesus. These commandments speak about Jesus. Not about you and me. And you and my lifestyle. As disciples of Jesus. We ought to be seeking Jesus. From the law and the prophets. Because Jesus said. These are talking about me. And when he clearly said. They are talking about me. What are we looking for? We are looking for 10 steps. 10 steps to overcome so and so. We are looking 10 steps for healthy family. 7 steps for this success in your business. Okay. And 10 steps for effective prayer. These are the things that we are trying to find instead of finding the person who is listening to our prayers. We are trying to find methods of prayers so that our prayers may be heard and accepted. But we are not ready to go to the person who hears the prayers. Just like the Pharisees. They are reading this Old Testament commandments and scriptures. Trying to obey their best. So that they may be acceptable. In the sight of the Lord. When the Lord himself have come to them. They were not ready to recognize. They were not ready to go to him. Isn't it happening with us? Aren't we acting like modern day Pharisees? So these two commandments, they are speaking about Jesus. So when we read there, we need to find Jesus. If, if our reading of the law didn't take us to Christ's feet, we read it wrongly. If the Ten Commandments we read, sorry, two commandments we read, if these two are not taking us to the feet of Jesus, then we read them wrongly. If these two commandments after we read, oh, there are six, ten commandments, 613 regulations, the number syllabus is so big. Oh, here just two, I can do it. And if we think, and you try to do it, we miss the point. We are not coming to Jesus. And the purpose of these commandments was not fulfilled. And having said that, let us move. Uh, to the next, next scripture that is Luke chapter 10 verse 25 to 28 this is a scripture that was read and behold a certain liar stood up and uh, tested him saying teacher what shall I do to inherit eternal life here the question is about eternal life and this lawyer comes and says what shall I do to inherit eternal life and uh, Jesus asked, Jesus is really very interesting person. And as I said in previously, we think that these two commandments are given to us. Let's see how beautifully this Pharisee summarizes it. Uh, uh, Jesus said to him, what is written in the law? What is your reading of it? So the Pharisee said, he answered and said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. Who summarized? The Pharisees summarized. It's not Jesus who summarized it here. And, and right after that, 
Jesus knows this person's heart and he did not appreciate him saying, oh, you well said. Okay, you well said and you try doing it, you will accomplish, you, live it, you will live eternal life. But Jesus here, he sarcastically speaks and says, okay, you have answered rightly, do this and you will live. And the why I'm saying Jesus spoke it sarcastically is because the following <laughs> scripture. If you read the following, you will find this man, he wants to show off that he was obeying all these. And he asked the question, who is my neighbor? And Jesus gives the example of the parable of uh, the Good Samaritan, from which we understand this fellow, he is thinking that he is obeying the commandments, but in reality, he was not. And another example we can, we can, we can, we can see was a rich young ruler who came to uh, Jesus asking, what shall I do to inherit the uh, eternal life? Jesus asked the same question, obey the commandments. These all are sarcastic because rich man means a righteous man, a lawyer who is well-versed in the law. Then he, they are asking, so they, he wants to trap them with their own words. And he asked them what the law says. And they say, so-and-so commandments, obey them. And that fellow says, I was obeying them from my childhood. Okay. And that is where we need to remember what Apostle Paul says in Galatians chapter 3, verse 10. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, three, uh, 2 verse 21, where it says, I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. These people are thinking that they are able to obey the law. But you know, we, James says that if you fail to obey even a small thing, if you wear jeans, then you are doomed to hell. Okay, so according to James, but this fellow is thinking he's obeying all the law, but in reality he was not. Because there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who seek after God. There is no one who understand. And there is no one who can obey the law. That's why Apostle Paul says, if anyone can uh, obey the law completely and can be accepted in the sight of the Lord, then Christ died in vain. And that's what those people thought. And let me bring it to our context, my brethren. If you and I think that we can obey these two commandments and be accepted in the sight of the Lord, let me tell you, we are doomed. Because no one can obey the law completely. What are these two commandments? Let me remind again. These are the summary of Old Testament only. Okay? This is just sugar, whether it is in the form of ice cream or it's in the form of candy. Whatever the form it is. It is the same white poison. And we think it is sweet. So easily we can do it. So if we think we can find life by obeying these two commandments, then we are wrong. And another thing, remember this, what Apostle Paul said in Galatians 3.10, for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, cursed is everyone who who, do, who does not continue in all things that are written in the book of the law to do them. We know we cannot do all things. That's why Jesus said, with men it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. It is impossible for you and I to fulfill the law. It is impossible for you and I to obey and fulfill the two commandments. That's why Jesus says, it is impossible for man, but all things are possible with God. And this is another sign for us. He's showing, see, these are talking about me. These are not about you. It is impossible for you to obey the commandments. It is talking about me. But unfortunately, we are reading over them. We are reading over them and saying, oh, I'm going to keep these two commandments. I'm going to teach people also to keep these two commandments. I would like to challenge and ask, whoever the preacher preached, I love the Lord with all your heart and mind and soul and love your neighbor as yourself. Could he do that at least? I'm standing in preacher's place. I'm saying, no, no one. We cannot do that. And we cannot live by that. So these two commandments are summary of Old Testament. They are not uh, asked. And we are not asked to obey and be accept, accepted in the sight of the Lord. And these commandments are not for us to obey and attain eternal life. But what these commandments are, 
one thing we have already seen these commandments are talking about jesus and we can find the fulfillment of these commandments in jesus when these are talking about jesus the fulfillment of the commandments also can be found in jesus so we should keep our eyes on jesus when it comes to the great commandments so let's see how these two commandments are fulfilled in jesus jesus accomplished the commandments in his incarnation not just on the cross in his the very act of incarnation from the day he was conceived in the womb of mary and he was born till the day he rose again from the dead and ascended to heaven and seated on the he heavenly places throughout his life he has accomplished these two commandments he has fulfilled these two commandments which means he has fulfilled the entire old testament law these two commandments are personified in jesus that is the main point i would like to bring throughout the sermon the two great commandments which we are talking that personified in jesus how number 1 But what is the first commandment love the lord with all your heart with all your mind and with all your soul question is are any of us could do that no look at jesus could he love the lord with all his heart mind and soul absolutely he loved the father to the fullest he loved the father even to the point of death he loved the father with his whole heart soul mind and strength with the love he has from eternity past to eternity future from the beginning even the word beginning is not suitable from eternity past he is completely loving the father which we are calling the word perichoresis father loves the son in completeness and son loves the father in completeness he gives complete himself to the father father gives complete of himself to the son they give themselves completely to each other in the spirit so jesus was loving the father with all his heart and mind and soul he accomplished the first commandment by his very nature and number 2 what is the second commandment love your neighbor as yourself right so first thing was the uh, so the father loves the son and son loves the father we know it very well and the scripture says in john chapter 14 verse 31 jesus where jesus says but that the world may know that i love the father with the confidence he is speaking about his love towards the father so he accomplished fulfilled the first commandment and second commandment is loving the neighbor and the scripture says in john chapter 13 verse 1 this is before the communion uh he says uh, when jesus knew his hour had come this is the day before his crucifixion he should depart from this world to the father having loved his own who were in the world he loved them to the end look at this verse loving somebody to the end means loving somebody completely in other words loving somebody with all our heart mind and soul Jesus loved the disciples and humans with all with his whole self just as he loved the father he loved us and that's why John 15 verse 13 he speaks greater love has no one than this than to lay down one's life for his friends there is no greater love than dying for a friend and Jesus died for you and me it shows the extreme or zeniths of extreme levels of his love he loved us completely which is the second commandment and no one in the world could accomplish this only jesus loved the father completely and loved us completely with with all his heart mind and soul so if we think these two commandments are given to us so that we may obey it and become acceptable to god we miss the point just as pharisees and jesus has accomplished for you and me these two commandments are summary of old covenant only not the new covenant jesus in his very incarnation he accomplished accomplished it 
for you and me. So how can we be obedient to these commandments or whatever the law says? How can we participate in it? The answer is, the answer is very simple. It is about our greatest obedience, our greatest uh, uh, obedience towards great commandments is the acceptance of vicarious life of Jesus. How can you obey these two commandments? The answer is when we could when we could focus on Jesus and when we go to the feet of Jesus and accept his vicarious life and his grace. We understood we cannot do it. Jesus, you help us. We are, and we depend on his grace. That is the way we can we can show our great obedience. Great obedience towards great commandments is in our acceptance of vicarious life of Jesus. Identifying ourselves in Jesus and living by the faith of Jesus. Apostle Paul says, I was crucified, sorry, I was crucified with Christ, buried with Christ, and resurrected with Christ. This is no longer I who live, but I live by, but Christ lives in me. The life I live now, I live by the faith of myself. No, faith of the Son of God again. Okay? By identifying ourselves, we are died, buried, resurrected in Jesus. Jesus has accomplished everything and we identify ourselves in that. Then we are being obedient to this commandment. And I would like to bring one, uh, sing one more point and then uh, go to, uh, and I will close it. How can we become the beneficiaries of what Jesus has accomplished, even obedience or fulfillment of the law? It reminds me of one scripture from Corinthians where Apostle Paul says, you are more than a conqueror. Do you remember this word? We, uh, we know conquerors. Who wins the battle? Yeah. Romans 8, 37. Okay. We all know how some conquerors can come. Winners. And what is this more than a conqueror? Have you ever thought about it? What is this more than a conqueror? It is like this. Imagine a boxer. Uh, he is fighting for the world championship. He goes to the ring and he fights with all his strength. He fights and he gets back also good hits. And he's losing his strength and his uh, blood was oozing from his body. But he suffered and suffered and he fought. He didn't give up. Even to the last breath in his body, he stood and he fought against this person. And he won the match. And the referee comes and hands over to him the world championship of this boxing. And he got this boxing championship and comes back to home and he goes to his wife and says, darling. And he puts the shield in, his, in her hands. He is a conqueror. Now she is more than a conqueror. That's what. That's what being more than a conqueror. And Jesus came, he obeyed these two commandments, accomplished the entire law. And he said, hey, here I come. I bestow my righteousness upon you. You, my beloved children. He is conqueror. We are more than conquerors. If Jesus accomplished, we accomplished more. We are more than conquerors. How can we participate? If wife says, no, 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 you fought. You take it. It's yours, your trophy. Okay? Then she gets nothing. If she takes, that's hers. Okay? Very simple way we can uh, accept, uh, well, we can show obedience and participate in what Jesus accomplished is receiving it. Nothing else. Okay? And, and another way we can participate in the accomplishment of Jesus, these great commandments in Jesus is participating in it through the Holy Communion. You remember the scripture very well. When Jesus took up the bowl and started washing the feet of Peter, he says, no, no, Lord, you shall not wash my feet. Then what did Jesus say? If you did not let me do this, if you don't let me do this, you don't have any part in me. If any of us still think, Jesus, that's up to you. I will obey the commandments by myself. And we are saying, 
no 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 jesus and for the for which jesus says you don't have part in me then jesus uh, peter says you know then give me a bath okay then peter jesus says no 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 it's only up to what i am giving you receive it so for us also whatever jesus is giving receiving it that's how we participate and then he gives the communion so one of the ways we can participate in the fulfillment of these um, great commandments which were accomplished by jesus is through communion also matthew chapter 26 verse 26 to 29 says and as they were eating jesus took bread blessed and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said take eat and as they were eating jesus took bread blessed and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said take it this is my body then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave to them saying drink from it all of you but i say to you i will not drink of this fruit of wine from now on until that day when you drink in uh, sorry when you drink it uh, new with you in my father's kingdom let us remember what jesus has accomplished for us and one way we can participate in his life is by participating in holy communion as we come to the table <laughs> scripture said this is the blood of the new covenant no we are no more under the old covenant now where we had to obey the two commandments but we are living in the new covenant where jesus has accomplished it and we live by faith and his life in and through us and obedience towards these two commandments is going to be a natural life and which starts from participating in the covenant jesus has made by taking part in his body and blood let us look unto the lord in prayer father we are in your presence with the attitude of gratitude for lord coming into this world through your incarnation lord you have accomplished and you have fulfilled the law which is burden to us which we are not able to do by ourselves even we are not able to do the small things but you have accomplished all these commandments and the and you have established a new covenant through your death through your blood and body o oh lord and you are inviting us and calling us more than conquerors and to participate so that we may be equally accepted as you are and we may be equally sharing your righteousness your joy love peace and the especially the relationship with the father lord as we come here and take part in the body and the blood of jesus which are symbolized by the wine and the bread here o lord i pray your grace may be granted to us so that in our spirits in our, and in our hearts we may be constantly reminded the fulfillment of our life in you and we may come before the throne of god with confidence because of the new covenant that you have established here o oh lord bless us lead us and guide us as we partake in jesus name we pray amen the blood and blood and body of jesus which are symbolized by wine and bread that are in front of us my brethren i would like to invite all of you to come and uh, take share take part in it take your cup and uh, bread and keep it with you we all can participate it together brethren the body of jesus christ which was broken for you and me and which accomplished all the requirements of the law for you and me let us participate wine symbolizing his blood which has written a new covenant for you and me where we are completely accepted and we are more than conquerors because what jesus has accomplished let us participate in his accomplishment as ours
let's pray father thank you so very much for sending your son jesus christ and his sacrifice on the cross because of him we could call one another as brothers and sisters and the children of the conquered and more than conquerors oh lord as we participate uh, in the uh, communion oh lord i pray your life may be manifested through faith in and through activity in and through us lord wherever we go we may be able to reflect your glory and uh, we may reflect your life and help us so that we may live worthy of the covenant in jesus name we pray amen